Hello and welcome to This Contains Garlic. You're here with your host Georgia Garlic and... Mark Garlic. And we're back and we were literally just talking about uh, whether or not our dog's poo was the right colour to uh, if she's feeling okay. Um, so that's the start of today. Uh, talking we... about the constitution of the dog. Yeah, literally. It's like having children, but we don't have children, so our animals are our children. Yeah. Uh, so anything that happens to the the dogs or the cat, it's almost like we would have some kind of level of childcare. We spend so much money on the animals, it's absolutely hideous sometimes, <laughs> literally. I think vet bills are just internationally super expensive. I think it's harder paying a vet when you don't really like them. Like, I don't really like our current vet. Well, one of them I don't like. Yeah, I'm not really wild on vets. No, neither am I. I just think, you know, after our little Iggy died, I just thought, mm, I just don't, I don't think you're here for the care of Yeah, I don't think we've incentive. had the best representation of good vets. No, and I, fair, I think cause... my mum would say differently. She always says, with her very obviously pedigree cats, uh, the ones that her, her life and soul and that have replaced me and my sister pretty much. Um, yeah. Literally, she's always like, no, we've got a really great vet and they always do things like complimentary. And I'm like, wow, okay, well, take yourself to Surrey again. Yeah. I don't think that's the case here. Um, yeah, anyway. I was just very put off by the, the, the vets in Cape Town. They were, the, the ones that we originally went to were horrific. Okay, I think you're a bit dramatic. And the woman, I think what and the, happened and was the quite receptionist unique. was incredibly rude. I mean, she so. had a number of issues. Like, she couldn't even get up from the chair, I think. She was stuck there with that. And there was a cat in that she was literally stuck there. She was the classic vet receptionist. I'm sorry yeah. if you're a vet receptionist isn't it, and you're actually just like a normal person. But there are stereotypes. <laughs> like, there yeah. is, I don't know what it is. If you can be a receptionist, hats off to you because. It's one of those jobs where you really receive the fucking Yeah, where the rubber, front end rubber meets the road and you're having to interact with the general population, which can be hit and miss. Hit and miss. Most people are cunts, to be quite honest with yeah. you. And on that note, we were actually just, we were going to do a full podcast on this. Maybe we will, but like, we're both getting just a bit tired about the gym cretins. Do you know what I mean? Like going into gym spaces and just thinking like, Oh my god, people like this actually do exist and I don't yeah. understand why. Like the gym, <coughs> gym okay, etiquette. Okay, fuck. It was yeah, just only a bit of a, <laughs> a, a moment. moment. <laughs> um the gym etiquette these days has has disappeared, which is quite sad. I don't think there's many places with any gym etiquette. No matter where we've gone, unless it's been our own gym, has it been like a sort of ten out of ten, or if it's been like a studio in which only I guess trainers you can't are really in control gym etiquette especially in a in a big members gym but there needs to be a level of understanding and education that the establishments need to take with not only the staff but the members as well just so that the overall in environment and the experience of the of the patrons of the place are going to have just a more positive experience i just feel like if like you're... if you see a, a, a like a, some dude being creepy you need to call him out, do you know what I mean? Because he's making people feel uncomfortable. Or somebody who profusely sweats all over oh, the God, equipment disgusting. and doesn't clean up after but themselves. But that being or... said, you know what? I came across somebody on social media the other day because obviously I just hate it. Because You know why I hate it? It's like I don't actually have that any interest in anybody else in this industry. I'm really good. Sorry, unless like I know you and like I think, you know, I just don't really like my interest isn't looking yeah. at other people all the day. My interest is more in like probably like food like animals like literally so but my algorithm is pumped full of just like every fucking coach or trainer or whatever and so i see it all and i saw this guy the other day that like clearly girls like really fucking love yeah. and he was like topless obviously and yes. all the videos topless yeah, he, to us, he's got a rig on him do you know what i mean yeah. i don't I, I see it if you've got it why not yeah, what the sure. fuck anyway but um and he like flicked sweat at the camera and he was that's covered disgusting. dripping it sweat. And I just thought, you know what? The poor person that's got to go into that CrossFit box, obviously CrossFit. Um, I just think that's kind of disgusting. But then girls are like literally in the comments, like, I wish you were dripping that on me. Like, what the What fuck? happened to COVID? Do you know what I mean? We, we <laughs> were to socially mean? distance from each other. <coughs> yeah, we were. Oh God, you're going to have to social distance oh, from I'm me in a minute. Like, Why are you coughing? What's wrong with you? Maybe it's uh, maybe Grandpa it's... Charles coming back from the dead. Oh, fuck off. No, so just a little side, you know, grand, 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 my grandfather died this weekend. 
You seem really sad about that. Well, it's not like we fostered a relationship. So <laughs> yeah, literally, they literally didn't have any it's relationship. A very hit or, it's not a very hit or miss. It's, uh, people are indifferent. That's you know what, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I've never lost any any human like close to me. Like, never. And I think I actually don't understand the level of grief that can bring you. Because I, it sounds really Only weird. Only if it's warranted. Like So I'm obviously a massive realist. And I like know that like grandparents are obviously going to go. And I'm very lucky. I've still got three of them, you know. Yeah. And like they are obviously much older now. Like, especially my one of my grandmas and my grandpa. But like... I'm just like, if I lose them, am I meant, to, am I going to cry? I don't know. I've got no idea. Like, I don't... Well, I guess but, you've, you've had more of a relationship with them than, than I had with Grandpa I don't know, Charles. but does that always warrant crying? Like, I don't, I don't know. I feel like... It doesn't. You can, you can, grief, grief is, comes in different forms. Do you know what I mean? Like... But then again, like I've our seen people, neighbor, I've seen people cry and they, you know, some people don't cry. Some people just don't say a thing. Some people process grief by just going on with life like nothing ever happened. You know what? Some of my friends have had to go through like extensive like... amounts of grief, like losing their like fathers and stuff like that. Yeah. And I don't think I could ever like swallow that. I don't. Th- I think your parents are something. You're like, oh my god. It's not something. Even though. Yeah, but it's meant to be like that, though. Unless you've got a shit relationship. I don't with understand your parents. why we're even. Why do we even get born? Do you know what I mean, this Cause... is what I just like. Because Chris like, so one day weird, just looked at Jane and just thought, Do you know what? Well, I'm I'd, love myself. To, I'd love to hit it. And Jane was keen. She was like, Come on, big boy. Oh my God. <coughs> can you stop coughing? Because I honestly feel like I'm going to put you in another room at this rate. In a coffin. Like, can you have some water or like clear your throat from all this nonsense sip. that's coming out? Number one, like imagine Richard piping the back doors of Carol, okay? So stop fucking Blowing thinking. Blowing them out. Blowing them out. Do you know what I mean? There'd be Blow nothing out the left back doors of like, a, like the SWAT team. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so not okay, Mark. Now people think that that's what you do to me, and now we're in the situation. It's not far from the truth. Okay, here we go. Mark's little ego, little ego coming through. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Strong Medium and fast. Medium sized ego. Strong, <laughs> strong as an ox. Um, that being said, it's not about the size of the ship. It's about the motion of the ocean. <laughs> Okay, I, I could go into this and I could really... And, but this is going out on Spotify, so I feel like I can't really say I'm going into this because otherwise I would make you feel very small right now. Um, like, literally, I hate... You know, it's like when you, like, avidly see things that you kind of think are a bit taboo and you're like, oh, my God, how is somebody, like, confident enough to, like... I don't, is it confidence or is it just too oversharing? I, I think, like I think a lot of it is much. performative, especially know, when it it's comes painful. to... Um, you know, oh, I've just bought this vibrator. Do you know what I mean? Let me go and stick it. I've all just over. strummed myself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I just like, like I let get you know it. that I, I haven't washed it yet. I <laughs> understand. I under. I like. I do understand. Like these are conversations that you know need to be discussed. I think know, certain but potentially topics, just like... keep it w- w- to yourself, and you know, like you got to think of. The context of like, oh, you know, your per- the, a person's parents are out socialising. Oh, what does your daughter do for a living? Well, she's a social media influencer. And then they go and look and it's just about her flicking a bean. Yeah, I know. Just do you know what I mean? It's just code. weird. It's really poor, isn't so it? So a lot of it is performative. A lot of it is everything is virtue signaling. I agree that there's certain things. And talking from a female's aspect here, I think there's certain things. Actually, I think there's a few things. I think... If, Men need to learn a fucking lot, but women, like I think, should have the ex- well, girls to feed, like to then obviously a woman would, I think, should have accessibility to understand like how to use a tampon, like how to sure. use um, a pad, like when is the right time for either of them, where mm. you should start, understand mm. like your fucking mm. area where you're shoving it into. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That shit should be known, but then potentially not, potentially not. Yeah on social media, potentially off of a platform which is not performative and has not got the opinions of others and it's actually just a very trustworthy place where you can go to learn about female health more. I would be more for that than plastering on how to use a tampon on social media. Like that's so invasive, I'm really sorry. Because it's not just the women that need to know about this, that yeah. all the girls growing up need to know about this, like yeah. watching that. That's yeah. like men watching it, it's fucking boys watching it it's women that but don't is, need to know that why is that a bad thing that uh, men or boys would watch something that you know what with a client them. this morning i had this exact conversation so 
I don't know if you've been aware of the story, because I wasn't until I did some research into because one of my clients mentioned it. Yeah. There's currently a breast, I think it's a breast cancer surgeon, yes. or it's a breast surgeon, I can't yeah. remember if it, you know, who is currently in, you know, being caught with potentially being liable. Well, yes. technically he gave a load of, he told women oh. that they had breast cancer <clears throat> and they didn't have it oh, to yeah. put them through treatments, technically make more money, but also there was clearly some uh, like really fucked up thing going on in his head about Ooh. what he was doing. So he put women through and literally told them, you've got breast cancer oh, and you, well, you're going to go through months of chemotherapy. Like how fucking horrific, you <laughs> sick fuck. Like, and then oh, women went through it and obviously God. then loads of people started dropping dead. And so people were like, wait, this doesn't make sense. There's a lot of women that have like come in and then not survived or are going through extensive amount of treatment. No anyway, reason. he could be liable for up to 650 cases in oh, this. Wow. So I was talking about my client. I was like, do you know what? This reminds me of wow. the girl that bullied me at school, okay? Yeah. Her father, she was fucking weird. And I can't describe it. She, her parents had like shit tons of money, like obviously private school, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. And her father, her parents were divorced, and the father was, he wasn't a gynecologist, he was a vagina doctor. And she used to like pick up loads of different ways of like him speaking about vaginas. I mean, a it's all What's very a weird. Like she clearly like been like people that maybe operate a... on vaginas. Yeah, but any, yes, like well, somebody like, that's a know, specialist in vagina cervix. So not necessarily a gynecologist, but they effectively can do but surgery. They could, like, on... I'm sure like a cosmetic surgery that could like address labias and stuff like, like that. you could fix like what a vagina looked like you know or you know because there's that whole thing of like looking yeah. like a nine-year-old girl you know, <laughs> literally um so it's though. so fucked and anyways getting to that by... point i actually think this girl that obviously bullied me extensively like clearly obviously when you grow up and you fucking realize and this is what i do with my job all the time the psychology behind these people are obviously there's trauma and triggers as to why they then go and bully somebody or yeah. host, do you think you it's know. because her dad just looked at coochie all day i actually think that men i don't know this is such a large statement to make but i have never felt and i've actually had this conversation with my female client we were discussing that she's never felt either comfortable going to a male doctor <sighs> to go and get anything done that's like a vaginal or no, like a cervix or just, boobs just, like just yeah, like taking your just, top off yeah. getting your flaps out hiring yeah, stirrups sure. just looking she, my client said to me she had the most horrific situation where like yeah she's like her coil like misplaced itself and so she had to go and get it fixed and she was out of where she normally goes to which is a female doctor yeah. so it ended up like and she was like i mean oh, bless no. him like it's one of those things you kind of with like a very good looking like you know what i mean younger she's yeah. like 50 mid 50s you know yeah. younger like doctor and she just was like i just wanted to curl up and die like just i shame. know in your head you're like it's fine just getting These people, it out these people love, like, they know, they know it's, you should be comfortable, they're professionals, but I'm sorry, I just feel you like You need to be a man, special individual just to want to look at vagina all day. I think it's because they're not interested in dicks, do you know what I mean? Otherwise, potentially, they would molest loads of penises. But I just think if you're straight, I feel, and you're not in I kind... Don't know. I don't yeah, know. I like, just, but I find it a bit weird, and you could be a man right now day, who deals no. with female hormones... That's different. Yeah, but if you're because like you can invested in a woman's yeah, pod, but like I just like to know why. Literally looking at a woman's like, breakfast is just. But I would just like to know why. Like, what was your thing? That Maybe like, they you love vagina. In Maybe this? they love vagina. Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe but that's just weird. Absolutely because gynecologists, you know, they did a study on this about loving vagina. Sorry, ma'am. Let me just stick some fingers in here just to see. Well, know, this is what I say. Rubbish. Is there like a weird thing in the yeah. back of their head that they enjoyed that? Of because course there is. Of they did a study on is. this. They they asked questions to a gynecologist on a group of gynecologist students that were males. Yeah. Why was the reason why you decided you want to be a gynecologist and they thought it was a better way of picking up women do you know what I mean like Damn. fuck like that's like so like that's not the okay. it's like because you're not you know there's a statistical probability that some of the vaginas that you're looking at are not you know they're not okay so yeah but that no, could I, that could I, taint your I, that could taint your, okay. your look <laughs> I on love that they're not okay <laughs> yeah that could taint your your overall you know your overall palette for vagina um, no, I don't, I just think, I just would love to know, and I really would like someone to answer this for me, who is a man, and is either, like, 
Boobs may be different because my male, my boob guy that I, I think had it's was cosmetic. Male. I think when it comes to like that, like cosmetic, cosmetic slightly different. I don't really like, care about that. I feel like you're doing it because you want to make it better. It's not like life threatening types of procedures. That's just cash money. That is fucking dollar that is bills. When you watch those reality TV programs and those guys come in sauntering in brand new Porsche, all on Porsche, HRT. Go yeah, and fucking all... increase a Porsche to something better. Do you know what I mean? Most of the, no, I used to watch that program. Most of them drove like hundred and fifty thousand dollar Porsches. Like yeah, why wouldn't you though? When you've got you're just and they're all stacked and they all so, got I can veneers. understand why people would have boob jobs. I don't. I don't understand women that get their bums done. Like it's the laziest fucking approach. And also, you're just injecting fat into somewhere which has already got fat. And so, like, what do you expect? That you're going to have an ass that looks as perfect as you think it's going to look, or is it going to be ridden with fucking cellulite? Mm. And you'll get the worst approach, and then you want to get rid of it because you're like, why do I not look lean and fucking toned? No, your oh, legs wait, you just, just look weird because well. there's no symmetry to your body. There is no, you can't just have a massive ass and skinny quads and, and hamstrings because then you just no. Look you've got to have some fucking weird. quads on you. You've got to have like some hamstrings. Kim Kardashian, like she, she's the prime example of with those unedited photos of her where it's just ridiculous. It's. You know, I mean, it's, yeah, it's they, a borderline yeah. like body dysmorphia, you know, psychological impingement on that particular individual to get to that point. I think it's one of these things because you can't look at that and go, the... mm, "This is sexy." You got you just look at that and you just think it's there's a psychological. Oh, well, I don't know. Actually, I feel I don't think it's necessarily psychological. I think we've been formed into always wanting like the ideal, and like if you are a petite girl, do you know what I mean? Or maybe you are a girl, a woman who has quite a petite upper body yeah. and like quite a larger lower body. So like. Yeah. I've always, like, fucking... I used to despise my legs. I fucking hated them. I was like, you are a fat person. And then, actually, you know, yeah, my you legs it. are oh. now, like, very muscular. A man and I came love up it. to Georgia and what? said to her... A man came oh. up to you in the gym and said, your legs are insane. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, lol, insane. okay. Georgia and was like, like, you oh, know, my God, thank you. Oh, you didn't say that, but your up. face was like... So happy because someone complimented me. You know sorry, what? I used to. But have... you've worked so hard and you've put so much effort in that. I'm happy. Yeah, I should fucking have this because I've yeah. trained enough intensity and I've given a fuck. Do yeah. you know what I mean? So consistently. Consistently. And I really enjoy it. And I said to Mark, I would rather like a man like look at me and think I'm kind of scared than think, oh, do you know what I mean? That's uh... Because you kind of then can just go in with confidence that just nobody's going to get in your way. But then they still do unless you're. Oh, God, the cretins in the gym. Yeah, there's no gym etiquette in 2023. And it's it has to go back to teaching people about personal space, teaching people about manners, teaching people about personal hygiene. Personal hygiene. Because oh, my it's God, it's just, revolting. It's yeah, revolting. It's, it is disgusting. You know what? There's a unisex bathroom in our gym. I'm not too much of a fan of that. Really not. Like, yeah. I think that's disgusting. Anyway, moving forward, it's a small place, so we can't be too particular. I just never go to the toilet. I'd rather wet myself. Um, the men that go in there and yeah. fucking go and shit yeah. in the toilet, which is on the same floor as like Blows part of this is a two floor gym. It's a three floor gym. So it's on the lower level to the whole of the gym. The door is yes. literally open to the bathroom. It's disgusting. Yes. And these guys come in looking like they've just eaten like a steak and ale pie from Iceland and like put it in the fucking... Cheeseburgers. They've, I've heard them. They eat cheeseburgers. Oh, whatever. Just gross. Your digestive system yeah. is just like not functioning very optimally. Let me just say that because there is nothing if like If you are the type like, of person that waits to then have a shit at the gym, you need... To be you written need down help. on a list. <laughs> you need to yeah, you need to put name, it in a there list. There needs just to be like a list. Files. People that that willingly shit at the gym. I need you on a list. <laughs> you need to be on a list. What's it going to be called? The shitter list. Because we the had even list. when we train clients in Chelsea, and we're talking about some of the most affluent clients. One particular woman used to come and shit in the toilet before a session. And stink the place out. Because I used to train clients who were so fucking affluent and all of this fancy that they would never even shit or fart in front of their husbands. 
Which, yeah, I appreciate that, these levels, but like... Okay, Mark, when you've had a bit of spicy rice and you're like, do you know what I mean? And it's hit you the wrong way. Yeah, How like, else some people feel... In? No, I, I, there's no judgment when, when it comes to that, but some people feel... Yeah, I don't agree that we need to like shit around each yeah. other. Do you know what I mean? We all obviously both pass some yeah. kind of, otherwise we'd be dead. As a personal dead. trainer, how many times have you been farted on? I mean, I've had a lady <laughs> literally fart in my mouth. Oh my God, where were you in your mouth? Like doing pull-ups? No, seated, holding the woman's ankle, kneeling position while she was on a, on a BOSU ball doing some like variation of an isometric, you know, hold. And she just, and I don't know, she's probably ball. leaning a little bit forward. Yeah, she had really bad sciatica, lower back pain. So the BOSU. Uh, yeah, BOSU ball Do you know was, what the BOSU ball is? If there yeah, are certain she farted exercises, and it, okay. and it was so wet, and it literally went on my taste buds. You know there is this thing with women's pelvis positionings, okay? Yeah. And me and one of my very good friends have discussed this, and I actually have experienced it in some movements where you actually feel like it's almost like you're having an orgasm. Your abdomen, like it's the way that you're... I'm sure that's not because you're just watching me whilst I exercise. Okay, to put into the context, me and Mark are not even in the same room when we exercise together, do you know what I mean? Um, I have to like message Mark to come and spot me on something or like just film me on doing something like half the time. Um, No, you get this weird sensation where you think, fuck, do you know what I mean? That's very similar to having sex, to be yeah. quite honest with you. And, you're, and it's it's known as a corgasm, like where effectively your pelvis like flexes in a different way. And it depends on your pelvic like positioning as to whether or not you'll experience that in certain movements. Mm-hmm. Um, like cycling's quite so bad we... for it. And I kind of feel like it's because you're literally on the clit. Do we need like to... On the clip into the clit, literally. Do we need to uh, re... Uh, reinvigorate the Kama Sutra to in- include more core-based sexual positions. Do you know what? How much of a bell end do you sound like right now? I'll just do a dead bug isometric like whilst you just insert yourself in the like, hip ninety ninety. Uh, do you know what I mean like loads? Of- <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like a plank um, and a couch stretch at the same time. So I want internal rotation of the hip, and then I want you to stretch for front of the yeah, femur to the fucking. They, these are USP going forward. Oh my do. god, like sex but mobility sex. Yeah, exactly. So you're killing two birds with one stone. I don't really think we're gurus enough to do that, Mark. I think. Not mobility, but you could also do like a plank or like a wheelbarrow. Uh, a wheel yeah, like a wheelbarrow okay I'm really sorry but I would love to know somebody that's genuinely had an orgasm in a wheelbarrow position like there's well, too think many about complexities it. so, many, so much requires so much uh, upper body strength for both parties yeah I've got be, that yeah, though I reckon I'd exactly. be able to you'd be able to hold yourself on your hands I guess, yeah I fucking how... would for minutes yeah, like yeah, literally yeah, like so. literally <laughs> And then just the whether or not you could be able holding, to have holding the, the the lower limbs, so that's like. But a then workout. you've got to be. And then you've got to, you know, keep. I love that you're ducking your head into the microphone. You've got to keep your to arms, you know, in a in a in a uh, parallel position. You know, but then kind you've of like got to a, squat down. At what point do you think of you're like the a, same height as me a in a full carrying. plank position? You'd have to. But this is this is where the the. Uh, uh, complexity increases is you'd have to be at an angle so you'd have to almost be in an overhead position you might as well just put me in a handstand do you know what I mean and then just fucking just do some weird shit like a voodoo get some gravity around. boots and then hang upside down <laughs> how much of a cunt do you know what I mean like literally like, <laughs> oh my god aerial yoga um, that's weird but I haven't tried it so I can't really pass my judgement maybe it'd be quite nice just to hang upside down there is benefits yeah. to it yeah they are they are it just um, think if you can decompresses with... your spine it's just not very nice for a few minutes like really not very nice um, but actually we were today we wanted to talk <laughs> we were going to go from the, the gym talk I think why I think there's a lot of things as to why this is relevant and it's not just in a weight loss sense or an obesity sense or a health and fitness sense it's in most it's in most elements of life but recently now more than ever we've realized that and this has come from people talking to us literally at the gym where especially men 
need to tell you how much money they've got to kind of compensate that they're like not in the same shape as you. And yeah. it's a weird thing because when you're a coach or a trainer, you like live, breathe, eat this lifestyle. Do you know what I mean? Like you literally, this is your day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. It is not somebody who necessarily only focus 1% of their day towards it life. And so when you look at somebody that trains really hard, eats well, and is in reasonably, you know, in good shape of what you would think is good shape, yeah. people feel like it's a slight threat because they can't have that exactly yeah, they that. They can't obtain it. They can't obtain it. They could obtain it but they that's their weak point they yes. can't necessarily obtain that so they almost see it like it's envy when somebody is in that shape but they don't like the fact that it literally yeah, so shines they, through discipline and they don't have that down, discipline cut you down a pig so instead they instead of sort of focusing on maybe they can't even do a chest pass over because their arms are like legitimately bent like the they then think the bank balance speaks for more and yeah. so this is what we want to talk about today is why are like what are you compensating for and yeah. this comes i think most prominently in where you will see this in either as i was saying a, a money sense but main, mainly to do with we're talking about weight loss because that could be it could be a lot of things so many to be honest overcompensating with you. when it comes to exercise and you know, not essentially, for example, not essentially being very adherent with your calorie intake. So you feel the necessity to increase your exercise duration or frequency to overcompensate for poor nutritional choices, overcompensating on steps, overcompensating on... I don't know. If you, like for example, like we could give an example like overcompensating on work because you don't necessarily have a great relationship. Sure. So you don't want to spend time potentially with that partner. So work is then more yeah, of a priority. You do basically work all the time. Yeah, so, you so that you to. don't have to spend time with your partner and it's a way of kind of sort of saying like yeah, I don't there. really want to spend time with you and so you overcompensate in areas of your life and you see it most of the time when it's about somebody's health. So I, I, when I've been around the most, I would say, unhealthy individuals in the sense of their lifestyle, what they do, you know, they're always going to, they're never going to highlight that vulnerability. Instead, they're going to compensate with something that they have got. Yeah. And then they'll do that to another level to try and get one up on the fact that they don't necessarily want to address yeah. the actual issue. And I think most importantly when it comes to stuff like exercise, you know, we're very, very passionate, like incredibly passionate about people. And I think I talk from personal experience here. People have messaged me over the years, like, and have just said like, you know, I've either watched your journey or who you are for like periods of like for years over social media, or I've just like seen you and how much you've progressed in certain elements or whatever. And they'll always say to me like, you are literally the only woman that I know that has managed to lose an extreme amount of body weight and be able to maintain it. And this has been maintaining it for a long period of time. Like it's part of life rather than just periods of weeks. And <clears throat> the more, more often than not, um, I find that when you're talking about a weight loss journey and you want to like exercise too much, you end up in a position where you just are ignoring like red, red, yeah. I don't know, red flags yeah, in red situations. Flag. So what we do is like, you know, this is actually a really prime example. And this is about the body positivity move, movement, actually, mm. of people who say like, you know, I've got rid of diet culture. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I've piled on shit tons of weight. Mm. I'm now going to glorify this but then I'm going to show you that everybody, everybody moves well and can move in different exercises and can exercise. Yeah. It's not about size. It's about like the fact that I'm fit and I'm healthy. And it's like, sure. you're not healthy if you're holding extreme amounts of body fat around your internal organs and yourself in the day-to-day -day basis. I do not yeah, really I care somebody yeah. arguing against that. I appreciate the emotional and the the emotional side you know side effects this is what we're mm. trying to get at the emotional side of this mm. is the thing that is stemming somebody to either 
want to deal with it or not want to deal with it. And so I find that when people go and say, like, you know what, we can exercise, you know, these people are all doing he hectic workouts, do you know what I mean? And I'm almost like, I don't understand why. I feel like you're doing that. It's the same as like, oh, by the way, guys, I've walked like 20,000 steps today. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you physically have no control over your diet. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And what you're putting into your body. So constantly what you do is you just outweigh it and you put it out to like the masses. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You're like... It's not coming from a good place. It's coming from a place of... Uh, it's coming from a negative place that is counterproductive. And trying to overcompensate is going to have a negative impact on your overall adherence and mental health over a long period of time. I think this also works, though, in the other extreme. Like, the people who you look at and you go, like, fuck, their physique is unbelievable. Do you know what I mean? Like, I really want to be like that. Yeah. Like, we I have not only... I guess you got you those... you to gotta just see where it's coming from because, I guess, those types of individuals... It also comes down to so many nuanced things that just like trying to place all of your emotions into one particular. No, know, but what I'm saying is, if like you, what you might see is like you know an unbelievable physique, and oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah. Behind the scenes, yeah. they're compensating for the fact that they don't like themselves. Do you know what I mean, they're always wanting to be what huge amounts of body dysmorphia. Yeah. They've got like they've got full control over that. They probably don't earn that much money. Like they probably don't have the the complete successes of what they might see in their peers there's a lot so, of sacrifice in those lifestyles as well we you know you're not clubbing you know i'm talking about the the some of the best physiques that you see in and around social media you know there's a lot of sacrifice and uh that goes into it that doesn't generally mean that they're having the best life experience yeah and that's what i always think like you know so i think it's always these things that a lot of times in people's lives like you know i'm very comfortable and confident in like a gym situation some people mm. are not but would i not feel so comfortable in other situations in my life yeah i mean horribly so like i wouldn't feel confident in some things and i think that in you in the times where you can be confident you really try to be confident and and mm. compensate but i think in general terms it's like i've spoken to a lot of people who don't like to swallow the fact that like they're unable to address like the main fucking problem like which is always yeah. what you're putting in your mouth like yeah, it's it's, so, it's it's it's, it's, it's really just is. Every, it's everything like that is that is the main um factor for everybody that could know, be alcohol in, that could be food, yeah just in just in modern society drugs. in general it could be prescription pain uh, uh, pain medication prescription pills xanax uh, you know anti-anxiety anti anti medication you know it's so mm. it's it's a choice that everybody has, um, but it is influenced by so many subconscious things from your environment to your socioeconomic status to your lifestyle to your friends and family. And it's very obvious that uh, the short-term gratification of food when it comes down to serotonin and dopamine secretion when you reward yourself you know, with food and food generally has become more pal palatable and readily available uh, as in the modern years, whether it's ordering a Uber Eats or, you know, you're having to expend so little energy to obtain really calorie dense foods that, are, that taste amazing. Yeah, but I'm always against this because I'm like, I appreciate the fact that we do things to satisfy us, but like the reason, like we've spoken about this recently and the fact that like how some they did a whole study based on the fact that with i can't remember how many people about 400 people in the study about like and they asked them the questions and went through the processes of like when was the last time they experienced physical hunger yeah. and they said when they yeah. were a child yeah. and like not in the sense of like nobody's starving them but just like felt like i'm hungry thing, i need to eat the thing is the problem you're is, surrounded by it every single it's day it's not if the you food open, accessibility if you open about... up and if you open up your app any social media platform you're gonna get you're gonna see food 
you're going to see food, you're going to see tasty things, recipes, and it's just that consistent no it is you eat, it's and not, that has it's been, not the consistency it has like, been it's an proven emotional attachment to food it's, yes but it's also it's life, also consistently top of mind where you're seeing it all the time now yes but when i was morbidly I mean? obese i didn't see it all the time my main factor was the fact that i I, I like food was a friend to me. Do you know what I mean? Like food was the thing that you went to when you were yeah, having you a bad day or you were bullied. Yes, like instead exactly. of being, you know, you would. It's comforting. It's a stress reliever. You then feel satisfied of some degree because you've managed to fulfil that emotion. But I definitely don't think it's something that is always just about. Like I do believe, and we had this conversation literally at the weekend, that when 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 I was very overweight and when I have helped a couple of clients who are the same time, you know what I mean, in the sense of they would agree in the sense of similar ages, when I was overweight, I was in an environment which didn't, was not conducive for overweight people. So it was very, it was, well, I just didn't see it. I didn't see people that were fat. I never saw people that was fat. None of the friends at school were fat. There was just literally me and there was one other girl that struggled with her weight, like quite extensively. And so it was just us two pretty much out of a group of like hundreds of people who all of them didn't struggle once with their weight, okay? And the same with my family, exactly the same. And the same with all of our family friends or, you know, nobody was fat, nobody. There has suddenly been, and I've just noticed it, not the fact that we don't work with weight loss, I've just noticed how acceptable it is to be very, very overweight as a younger individual these days. And it almost was quite eye-opening. Like we went out the other day and I just said to Mark, there are so many like teenagers around us right now Mm -hmm. who are morbidly obese. And that mm. is now in my opinion it's a the product problem of your environment because they though. are being it's now their environment is now conducive for it and i am not saying that the way that i was treated when i was overweight was something that anybody should go through i know plenty of people who have been through large transformations they have had judgment shame put upon them for being fat or to having body fat on them of extreme levels and i don't agree it should ever belittle your self worth But if I had never felt that level of slight, like I don't fit in here because I have got too much body fat on me because I am very, very overweight and nobody else is, I had never felt that weird, like isolated feeling that you were the only person like this and you had no control over it. Mm. I don't think I would have ever actioned anything. And I just think it's almost like it's accepted now. It's accepted and it's told that it's okay. It's fucking okay. And I am not sitting here but with no body you fat it's on okay. me. Who's telling you it's okay? Social media, like people who but are who, uncomfortable. But I'm just saying it's a lot of people. Influencers. That are, and yeah, that, but and those, those are influ- not professional. That's what I'm trying to get at is everybody's listening. Sake. Everybody's a professional Everyone's these listening days. to people that are not founded in, in scientific research. But when like it comes to emotion, you're not of, listening no, to scientific that. research. Who no, the I'm just saying, but, but people research. that then follow and 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 parrot repeat what they learn from social media influencers and decide if that's how they want to choose their life, then they should live the, with the repercussions. No, listen to me, Mark, because that's a load of bullshit. What I'm trying to say <coughs> is, if you are somebody who is who doesn't have the formative brain or the understanding mm-hmm. yet, and you are somebody that sits at the age of twelve upwards, between yes. the age of twelve and twenty-one, you are in the element of being ingraining in social media content. Yes, you don't have the second brain or the second mind telling you. Do you know what? Maybe you should think about that. It's a bit naive before you do this. So if you are a girl or a boy who is struggling with being overweight, their parents might be overweight. They're struggling with the fact they're overweight. They may be bullied for it. Or maybe they're around loads of friends that are overweight. And now they're seeing on social media that it's okay to be like that. They're only going to go more downhill. But if you go to, if, if hypothetically that person then goes, let's say they, they are uh, need or have, go to a doctor, for example, and the doctor tells them that they should potentially look at a, a reduction strategy to, to improve their quality of life. Do you think that they're going to listen to the doctor or do you think they're going to be like, actually, no, 
Stacy st- told me that it's okay to be like this. No, I actually think there's, because you've never experienced it and it's clearly coming out right now, I don't agree <laughs> with that. I really don't fucking agree with it. Yeah, I well, think that's the that, whole point of having a conversation. Yeah, because I'm going to get enraged have to agree on everything. The, no, I'm not agreeing of it because I believe that, like, people aren't, like, if somebody's gone to a doctor due to their health, do you know what yes. I mean, they told you to reduce it, there's already a first step in the fact that I've got to go to the doctor because something's not okay. Yes. So there's already that first step, which addressing it and, and stomaching the situation where if you're young and you're like, oh, my God, I'm very overweight and I need to do something about it, that yes. is a great first point. Sure. Most of these people don't have financial availability to be getting professional help no, and they're ingraining that content from everybody like we're part of the fucking party here mark do you know what i mean we're the ones also posting shit tons of content engaging with people about health fitness if our fucking word wasn't great it probably would also influence quite a few fucking people and i'm not saying that that can ever change what i'm saying is the fact that if somebody is mm. overweight and is younger and is ingraining this knowledge, yes. they're not going to know two shits about what is right and what is wrong. No. And if somebody's like to you, do you know what? You are better than this. You need to know your worth. And like we're in the part, we are literally in the generation of spoon feeding to like quite literally. Mm. So you think that that on a consistent basis of being told that your worth is not your weight. And I definitely agree with that, but like, you know, or, yeah. you know, beauty comes in all shapes and sizes and all of these clothing brands, then catering for plus size, like yeah. hugely plus size girls yes. who are at the age of 20 or, you know, your mid 20 should not be morbidly overweight. You know what I mean? There is clearly emotional ties here, but then cement that with repetition in the sense of people telling you it's okay, showing their bodies, showing them what it's like, you know, an unflattered, flattered, showing, you know, that, you know, bodies are always, yeah, all bodies are the same. I'm not sat here with a fucking ripping six pack with sweat dripping off of me, do you know what I mean? <sighs> but I am also aware that if you are to sit there with excessive amounts of body fat and having lost excessive amounts of body fat, yeah. that you're not better off with it, do you know what I mean? And we shouldn't be glorifying those extreme levels to girls that are literally killing themselves. But There's no other way to describe it's it. It's a product of your environment. It's, you know, it's... It, it, That's what I mean. That now the environment is so conducive for it. The friendships know, may, the UK, may also now UK be overweight. The UK is, is, has very rarely ever, ever been known to house the healthiest individuals. Like, only when you go up the socioeconomic scale and you uh, to the more affluent individuals do you see people that are more weight neutral as opposed to yeah but that's what they always say it's the the privileged are the thinnest yeah. that's what they always used to say it was like oh if you're thin you're privileged well i couldn't actually disagree because with that more have you seen a crackhead do you know what i mean like it's not exactly privileged <laughs> no. <laughs> like you know you know it's and and the same as like anorexia is not privileged in my opinion that's like exactly the same as the extremes of obesity you don't walk past a girl who's anorexic and actually no. let me just tell you this there's very rare it's very rare to see yeah. like we used to see a few around London. Um, one of my best friends was chronically anorexic. Like she was in hospital for like years in and out. Um, it's when you see a, somebody like that, we saw a man in the gym who was anorexic the other day. It's quite like, it's a little bit of a, it's an eye opening. You, you again, the same with, but I feel like if you walked in there with quite a lot of body fat, people yeah. would just be like, cool, whatever. And I'm not saying there needs to be a level of judgment, no. but when you see somebody of extremes, you when you see somebody that's super thin, really, really super thin, you notice it. You're like, fuck, that person's really thin. Like, you know what I mean? In your sure. head, whether or not you want to be that person, I'll say it for you. You do say, all that person's skinny, all that person's thin, do you know what I mean, in your head, because you're not that person. But unfortunately now, social situations for those that are overweight is now conducive to it. Nobody's going to mention that you're fat, do you know what I mean? Nobody's going to say, oh, you're a bit overweight. You know, it's normalised. It, yeah. It's totally normalised. Yeah. <clears throat> and I... I, I I don't think it's, you know, we need to have, you, well, you wonder why in 2023 we are in obesity epidemic. It's not because we can't fucking eat less and move more, do yeah. you know what I mean? It's because we are emotionally fucking scarred. Not only is our mental health from a younger age up into adulthood 
terrible because of either nutritional yeah. qualities, brain functionalities, like whether or not you've got enough serotonin pumping through your brain, because I most certainly don't. Yeah. Like, you know, all of these things where we are just pushing ourselves and then you've got the level of influence on top of that, which is such a strong thing. Yeah. It really is. I people... think it's also just quite difficult for people to manage it all from like having a, a professional life to finding time to, you know, get your steps and go to the gym, meal prep, you know, <sighs> all that kind of stuff. It's life was, and you, then you got to take into consideration that the vast majority of people don't care. Do you know what I mean? Like but we you said, because you don't care. Everybody, because I cared. The I cared vast every day. Majority. My parents sent me to a fucking Chelsea nutritionist at the age of like twelve. I was having acupuncture put in me and being fed like yeah, blue but corn that's, chips but, and but turkey sausages. Yeah, but that's because it's a product of your environment. Yes, like, and I'm not saying like that's if your parent, right. If you, if uh, yeah, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but that's the reason why. But they were so concerned that I was ill that I had a thyroid problem. Do you know what I mean? They literally thought I was ill. I specifically remember my mum being like, "We need to have blood tests done because you're ill." I don't understand why you're piling on so much weight until <laughs> she found that I was obviously binge eating and hiding all the shit, and I was getting it, and I was, you know, I, I'd take money off the side. Do you know what I mean? And I'd go and buy myself like large chocolate bars mm. and crisps and I used to just chocolate eat milk. it all fucking day like literally and I'd hide I'd hide everything and so I don't think like I should have had a more conducive environment and I think if I was to ever have a child like I probably would be the most perfect person to like navigate diet culture with them but my mum wasn't great for it to be quite fucking honest with you because she was brought up in a diet culture heavy family so these sort of things of like there's something wrong with you when yeah. actually it was quite obvious I was being bullied hectically at school I was really unhappy and actually they instead of pumping me for blood tests yeah. should have, and you know fancy nutritionists and stuff yeah. we should have just actually probably gone to therapy do you know what I mean that yeah. would have been a great idea just to talk sure. through why I was doing that and why yeah. I used food as my mechanism as my safety and then I went on to drugs and then I went on to alcohol and all the rest of it but I do think that if I'm not saying that is another extreme, like I don't think e I don't think anybody should experience horrible stuff. I really don't. But unfortunately, life will test you in times yeah. where you think, "Fuck, where did that come from?" Or sure. you know, "Why am I dealing with this? Like, why am I so unfortunate? Why me?" Do you know what mm. I mean? And those times you sometimes have to realize actually might help you in the greater good. And I don't think it hasn't scarred me for life, but I have done a lot, a lot of emotional work for me to understand why people work the way they do in situations uh -huh. like weight loss or weight gain. And, you know, it's inherently known that, you know, they've done huge studies on this, that 85% of women that have gone through a weight loss journey said that they had zero support from their surrounding environment because it turned from being a family member or a friend to being yeah, envious or jealous or competitive. And saying things like oh you're fine just the way you are or oh, you know geez, everything oh, oh from, if you're not having dessert i won't have yeah, dessert make you feel guilty peer pressure, you know? You know, and so, so a whole bunch of but i also think that we if we create environments which where you know as i said like there's so much emotion attached to everything and our emotions are becoming erratic as the years go by at the moment in the in the world's you know it's almost like civilization won't be able to survive much longer genuinely and i think that if we can't carry on encouraging the space for i guess any extreme on health you know it's only going to go one way or the other and at the moment it's going one way which is yeah. it's quite obvious that we are we're not just obese because we're not eating if we all just followed those principles just eat less move more none of us would have any weight issues there are so many anomalies yeah. you know food availability obviously environment yeah. obviously but yeah. if your parents are overweight your sister might be overweight your brother might be overweight your auntie and uncle are overweight do you know what i mean do you think that you're in a situation where you're going to address that? No, because it's normalized. Yeah. Now, if you're in a thin inspiration fucking family, that's also hectically worrying and the huge amounts yeah. of diet culture. Because if your weight fluctuates in either direction, then you're going to get ostracized regardless. Oh, yeah. Like, massively so. Because it's just like, oh, my God, she's so fat. Like, I remember seeing a photo of me when I was really overweight against my mum and just thinking I could eat her. I literally looked like I could eat her. Like, I literally, like, there was no other way to describe no. it. Like, I'm the tallest out of the girls in the family. Yeah. Like, 
and just looking against me and my mum, who's really petite, do you know what I mean? I was like, fuck, I could eat you. Do you know what I mean? That needs to change. Like, literally, because it's like, it just, it, I don't know. I just think that there are things that I feel like, as much as we should feel things, we should experience, we need to do some kind of level of like hard work to actually go, do you know what? This isn't the best way for me you know what I mean but I don't know where that situation lies in the teenage population who are only getting their information from like the likes of TikTok Instagram and then school but like like all of us you've always always got to you've always got to you know if you like I said if you take it upon yourself to implement and follow an influencer's advice on anything then it it's is, not advice, Mark. It's life. Their life. It's well, yeah, but it's also, but it's the same. It's the same. Follow. It's the same as everybody was caught up with, you know, oh, the first wave of you know f- fitness influencers that drove the market with book sales and a whole bunch of shit. Oh, cough, cough. They all had mental health issues. So do you know what I mean? So it's like, yes, you, you could potentially go and listen and follow an influencer and their lifestyle and want to mimic it and do all that stuff but you need to then take uh, the responsibility upon your shoulders to realize that the vast majority of it's going to de- lead you down a very dark oh, and Jesus what were you what was your brain like as a 14 year old probably spastic to every degree you're probably having a wank over a magazine in Zimbabwe at what point do you think at 14 years old your brain is that fucking intelligent or switched on enough years old, to differentiate quite, you, yeah exactly and then you go down the path of just being uh, you know you got to figure out through your own mistakes no fuck off Mark I'm talking about That's the, what we the all health did. of the whole of the teenage the younger generation is declining and you know it, it's not rare anymore it's yeah, everywhere but it also can can come down to the parents and because everybody's complaining oh the younger generation the younger generation who's parenting them do you know no, what I mean no I get that I'm just talking so, about that if the parents have never learnt the children never learn so where the fuck do they learn and that the point is is right now whether or not you in your fucking scientific research want to admit yeah, this it's not a, a very attractive answer and that's always been the case like what the fuck Mark it's a 14 year old no 14 year old yeah, but needs it's to go through it's always going to be work. no but it's always living. going to be more you're, yeah but you're always going to be a I would want nothing more. less than my child to go through like what I went through in my brain between the ages of 12 and 20 I would want nothing less because it was fucking miserable and none of it was something that I think I'm proud of or got me anywhere and I don't think and I was very naive and I nearly killed myself on numerous fucking times and if I I don't think anybody needs to just test that just to see if they'll make a mistake I don't think they even need to be in the position in the fucking first place yeah. and it's not about but the just... answer that you're trying to provide people that, that that they need is not as attractive as as a personality or a narrative but what that I'm saying is, is that if by... they relate to something then it's now comforting if you relate to somebody saying to you you know what I was mentally unhappy and I was really ill in my head and that's the reason why I had a very lean physique and I'm I'm now back to where I should be yeah. and I can maintain and I'm happy. Yes. And that's just somebody that does just look fucking normal in some degree. It's probably mm-hmm. still quite petite on the normal side, you know. Yeah. Then somebody's going to go, do you know what? Okay, I get that now. Actually, maybe I shouldn't be striving for such a lean physique. Maybe I'll just stay at my maintenance. Now, yes. the difference is, is when somebody has piled on huge amounts of weight, like yo-yo yes. to a heavy amount, who is then saying, I am my happiest and healthiest I've ever been. Yes. And somebody who sat there as a teenager who is in their position very overweight yes. is then seeing them going, yeah, so am I. Let me just run with this confidence. Yeah. Let me run with this body confidence. I am confident in my own skin. I don't need to lose weight. Exactly. I don't need to be a certain size. And you don't need to be a certain size. I'm just yeah. saying in the picture of this, yes. that's when a teenager is going, Yes, 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 yes. Like, yeah, this is me. This is my life. I'm merging to you. you Well, I guess some people are entitled to their opinion. What do you fucking mean by that? Well, They're I a guess... child. They, Mark, you, you clearly don't realise because you've had the generation without it and now you're in it and we run an online business. But, but I get, you know, some people you know are entitled to their opinion. Do you know the effects that's done to people's brains? No, I am, I'm f- fully aware of it, but I'm just saying that some people are also entitled to, to feeling that way, I guess. No, I 
think you're so entitled to think what the fuck you want, but how about be careful about how you share it to know that you have a huge power over somebody? And you do, and I don't care. People get influenced by me. Weird, do you know what I mean? But yeah. I've always thought that. I've had tens of thousands of followers. My sister's had tens of thousands of followers. Guess, it's weird. But Why you, are you but the thing your is, life like, but, but, but you, but no, the, and I tell That's you, why right, I because sharing. you have, you have proven that you have undergone a huge transformation and you're able to maintain it and a lot of people would find that inspirational because a lot of the people that were idolized at the beginning of the industry have all gone backwards in in one shape or another with regards to their own personal body composition goals and because it was all driven by negative and a negative narrative in the first place and people hence the reason why you get told time and time again you're the only female that we know have been going for however many years and not gone backwards. Yeah, but Do you know what I, mean? I, I get that. But then there's and like also- you're the, you're incredibly relatable because a lot of uh, the, the vast majority of the blue ticks, especially the females, are women that have never been overweight a day in their life. So they can't relate and they don't understand the personal journey, both physically and mentally, that you have to endure from being ostracized to people thinking that you're worthless because you're fat, you're just a fat person. You know, they, they've they never experienced that. Do you know what I mean? So it's so much more powerful coming from a person that's li- walk the walk, talk the talk, than old Sally, who's, you know, been 47 kilos her entire life. No, and I, I, I do see do I mean? that, but I almost think that, like, what I always try and reiterate to people, I guess what I did maybe would work for you in a weird way, because it wasn't just full of fucking shit, you know? I did exactly. it in the right you've way, got but... The, you've got the knowledge and understanding but the, of the science and the evidence-based narrative that you should essentially be idolised, and that's the reality, is that... What the fuck? You should. It's essentially, the way I see it is, is that the narrative, the, both psychologically and physically, should be a narrative that most women of any age aspires to, and not put this narrative of, oh, you know, this utter bullshit that you see, that all these people, they idolise, like like the person in our building when they just bang on about that that one influencer that everybody loves and has to follow and I do her method and it's like it's dog shit it's exercises that is made up look like her. yeah and and it's, there's nothing to aspire to yes you've got abs but that's about it but you it's know it's not even an it's, ab it's just like a it's but it's just so it's so problems. reductive it's so reductive and it's so it's painful to watch. That's why we cannot, and under any circumstance, even remotely p- put one piece of attention to other people in the industry because it is just, you end up smashing it I know, it but then the I wall. don't want to ever cut. This is where I was like, fuck, I'm just never going to share this again. But then I was it's like, so you know, difficult it is- because you've got a person trying to lose weight has got so my, many minefields and so much more now. Like back in the day, you pick up a mag- bodybuilding magazine and you're like, oh, the reason why I'm not losing weight is because I'm not taking hydroxy cut. You know what I mean? And then you just move on with your life. But now you're going on and you're seeing old Dr. Douchebag telling you that you need your gut biome regulated before you can lose an ounce of uh, body fat and that if you drink orange juice, you're going to get cancer. That's one aspect, but he's a doctor, so you, there's a current appeal to authority that every oh god, he's he's a number three bestseller on. Uh, to, we just must l- listen to absolutely everything he says because it's gospel. Then you got the the fitness influencer who has no lived experience and never coached a person in their entire life, telling you this is how it should be done. It's it's a one minefield after then the mainstream media of, you know, bloody the Daily Mail writing something about you know going on a water fast for three days. Do you know what I mean? And it's so confusing that that it's almost impossible for a person like that if they like you said also in an environment that is not su- supportive and conducive to long term weight loss. Like you have to 
you know, arrive to the game so physically and mentally prepared to literally turn your life upside down that it is almost impossible for people to do in a long term. So, like, everybody's lost weight. Like, that's easy. Anybody can lose weight. But it's how do you maintain that? How do you lose 10 kilos and keep that 10 kilos off? Do you know what I mean? Like, that's the reality. And you've done it. You've lived the experience. You've coached numerous, hundreds of women and men to doing exactly that. So why shouldn't you be put on a pedestal? Uh, Because it's, I get it, because I don't think it's worthy because I haven't really shared my story that much, but I feel like my story would probably be best shared rather than I, by the way, guys, I lost like 60 kilos in body weight. It's actually more the fact that like, and 10 years later, I'm still exactly where, you know what I mean? Like I don't need, and nothing's changed. Do you know what I mean? The only thing that's changed is I've got better. Like, and instead of, and, and yeah, like I feel like that story is something that I, I feel a lot of, and I'm talking from a female and woman aspect that are struggling with their weight, like do need to hear in a way. But I also am very conscious of something, which is I came from a very privileged background. I had the ability to have a privileged uh, intro to weight loss and to doing all of that. No, no, because you're shaking your head. No, I get that. No, I'm not speaking for you, but but like most of the the people that are blue ticks that are fitness influencers please tell me which one apart from maybe one individual yes but i just don't came want from to look rags like a to ruins to the rest of I don't them need were, to be a blue we're talking ticker, about oxford mean, cambridge individuals who have i find you know, it so self-centered for me to sit there for literally every week every day every month hi guys i just thought i'd let you know that i used to look like this and now i look like this and i'm really great and i'm really though. great and i'm very good and i'm very good it's so self-centered like in my eyes which is maybe not the right way of doing it Mm. it's like okay i have done this okay not many people know about it but if i can just help other people do the same then i'll be okay do you know what i mean but to be able to get those people i guess you have to share so then they relate to it and they come back but that's influence that's not coming off the fact that i know a lot so it's coming off my boat, my personal experience, yeah. which does speak for a lot because obviously I completely understand the psychology, but I always want to be known for my professional experience, not my personal experience because I feel like that's like a joke job. I don't know what it is. It's just that's my feeling. I feel like it's self-centered and that I can't help somebody with their own journey if I'm too focused on my fucking own do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, but what? That's, but it's it's the most relatable thing for for people in that in in that environment because when you have spoken about it and shared uh, more information on your overall weight loss journey, it has sparked interest in people contacting us and being like, "I resonate with you." Please can I coach with you because I value your information. Yeah, and I think we're coming back round to this point. Do you know what I mean? Like we always. The, the, the reality is, is because what's what the reason why everyone finds it so vapid and monotonous is because unfortunately the vast majority of this industry has not got anything of value to offer. It's hi. I've woken up today. I'm really anxious. I want to cry. Um, let me just get my drawer but, open. Yeah, with my let me. Yeah, let me. I'm just going to journal, write my thoughts down, and then lemon water. Here's an advert for uh, scones and a loaf of bread, and then an advert for financial planning because you need to worry about ETFs and stocks and commodities, and then it's me driving to the gym in my Porsche. And then doing a workout and coming home and eating an acai bowl. Do you know what I mean? That over and over, it's pointless. It is absolutely and utterly drivel, right? Mm. And like, oh, here's a handbag. Pretty cool. And watch me go on 14 holidays a year. Like, that is not, you would never, (laughs) you would never, in not since I've ever known you, put that shit on, on social media. You've always been about relating your personal experience back into but how can i help you i'm and just this too is the fucking reality. self-conscious of it to be quite if they're not you. shoving a fucking you know some shitty skin product down your throat or some leggings that you when you bend over you can see the dog's breakfast if they're not shoving a product down your throat what are they actually doing they're not coaching people. They're having a great time. Yeah, they are. And that's the <laughs> thing that really pisses me off because when you do really invest your time and your effort into clients, it, it's a very 
it's a very roller coaster job because you, oh you my god it is sometimes draining. when your clients do well it's great but when your clients are, are, are struggling themselves and you actually care about it you yourself are struggling you're always trying to troubleshoot for people trying to get people to you know take their own personal goals seriously when you're selling an app or you know let's do a workout but you're you're employing some other bird to do it Mm. whilst you're sat in dubai picking your nose like that is not coaching people and like i get it and it comes across from like a very bitter point because like if i could be if i I could be in dubai you know just working on my pecs whilst making shit loads of money and not having to have not having to worry then that's a very viable option but when you're actually having to deal with in people on a day-to-day basis the the story and the content that you produce is so different because it's always going to refer back to how can we help you come along for the journey join us improve your health improve your quality of life i think the reality is is that both of us as individuals are very self-conscious and always have been and again this is exactly why i'd reiterate that all these people you say that see are striving for something or want to be better or stuff does not mean that it's not coming from fucking demons inside of you like i do think it's it's it has to be relatable like you know there's times where i don't like myself i mean and i'm sure mark exactly the same and it's it's normal psychology that goes to your head and it's the ways that you then action things forward now we do it in probably quite a progressive manner some people would say it's obsessive it's not obsessive but we do it in a way that's like okay well maybe I don't feel great about myself maybe I need to be watching my nutrition or get a better night's sleep or maybe get some more daily movement in because we're privileged to think that way because it's our careers you know Mm -hmm. like but I, I don't think, I mean, it's one of these things where I just think we are self-conscious. We, we beca- just because you lose, sh- and I've mentioned this so many times, like shit tons of body weight doesn't mean that like your mind just fucking yeah. changes alongside it. You've actually got 100%. to really put the work in, that you've yeah. really got to put the work and in. And you see, you see people, that's why uh, there's another big massive impact of yo-yoing. It's like, I'm going to feel so much better about myself when I'm, when I weigh 10 kilos less. And when you get there, you know, and your environment it could be work, it could be your partner, it could be a whole bunch of other things is still the same and you still feel really shit about yourself. You're like, well, what's the point? And then also, like, I see quite a lot of, um, there's quite a lot of link to people then compensating other factors when they lose weight. So whether that's like spending excessive amounts of money because you can't like seek comfort in anything else. So you need to buy things. I used to do that like all the time, very yeah. late at night. And I think also the seek of attention. And I think anybody that's lost a lot of weight, like mm. a lot of weight in our generation of people, like need need to tell you. They, like, they need to tell you because they're proud of it. And they're like one of the anomalies that have managed to fucking nail it and to get it into the thing. And so they yeah. need to tell you. And it's a just way a, of I like- I think we're just, we're, you and I are just abnormal though, because most people would do no, that. No, the thing is though, I've got so, I always say this, it sometimes works in my favor and other times doesn't because I drive myself insane. I legitimately think into everything like it's a forensic case. Like there's no other way to describe it. I overthink fucking everything. And um, that's probably why I'm inherently anxious. Like, you know, in the sense of a person. But it definitely runs in your family. But I'm always, but I'm like, and I have have got ADHD of some degree. Do you know what I mean? In the sense of like how I can concentrate. And if it doesn't interest me, then I'm fucking over it. And, (laughs) you know, and I, but I am really realistic. And, you know, as a coach, it fucking helps because I just don't really put up with the bullshit. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can... It's not bullshit sometimes. Sometimes there's problems that need to be navigated, but we're going to do it in the most realistic manner here because, you know, we can't just ca- carry, you know, carry on putting people into a nice, comfy blanket and telling them everything is okay because, no. you know, there are periods, like I said at the start of this, when you go through periods of grief or you go through periods where you're like, why does life do this? Do you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? But unfortunately, it's just this weird thing that we're born into and we've just got to navigate in some degree. And everything's got a solution, you know. Unless you are medically unwell and you've been told you've got no chance, do you know what I mean? You've still got a chance to do something. You've You've got got choices choices to make. You've got 
things that you can be in control of. And like, you know, they always say this and sometimes I think, oh, vomit, do you know what I mean? But like, you are, you know, the, the product of what you live on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, and if you put your mind to something, your destiny fucking gets you there. You know, you know, the angels will come down and lift you up into being like this amazing person. But the reality is if you've got no confidence in something or yourself or whatever you're doing, it's not gonna necessarily benefit you i don't know like i don't think that i think confidence in in like we say like to compensate in things you know like it means that you've got to be very confident in other aspects of your life to then be able to compensate more you know some of the most confident people in the world uh, in social s s uh, surroundings are will tell you that they're trying to overcompensate for other aspects yeah like, so like overcompensating is not always uh it's it's very rarely a, a productive uh quest no it's not and i think you know obviously we always say like seek balance i mean like balance is so unique to everybody you know that balance is very different between me and you you and the listeners me and the listeners yeah. you know so i think it is about that thing where if you are looking at part of your life and you're like, oh my God, actually, I am going to go to the gym today because I'm only going because I feel like I need to like burn something off because I've yeah. managed, I haven't managed to, I've just eaten 10 chocolate eclairs and yeah. you know what I mean? Then say to yourself, like, maybe you need to change your mindset of why you're moving your body. And that's why we're always like, you should be moving your body for the strength, the mobility, the mental aspect, yeah. not the burning aspect, because you can't take accurate readings from that. No. Everybody always thinks that if they do a workout, they deserve something. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, guys, but I've been to the gym today. I deserve this. You know what I mean? Well or deserved. I can just have a little extra portion of something because I've, I've earned it. Yeah, and it's like, oh, my watch told me and I burned a thousand calories. The reality is, so is, is, like Georgia said, your... Uh, expenditure reading that you get from your calorie trackers or expenditure trackers are highly inaccurate so if you're going to the gym and you train really really hard you're probably burning two 250 calories which is the equivalent of you know you know you could yeah, I you mean, could, look, I think we you are could basically drink so 250 calories in 30 seconds but it would take you an hour and a half of hard intense exercise to burn the same amount of calories so when it comes to overcompensating and being like oh i deserve this that mental narrative around seeing food as a reward and constantly feeling like you have to reward yourself for you know just doing the most mundane task is always going to have a, a negative impact because it's it's something that always compounds on itself to making yourself feel bad about yourself. You know, maybe you're not seeing the progress as quickly as you want to, and then it becomes like, well, what's the point? Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. because you're not seeing it as a negative thing. You're I'm training a lot, even though you're rewarding yourself afterwards, which is negating and impacting that overall metabolic input and output balance and then you're like if you're not ever seeing any progress and you've been trying to do this for 20 weeks and you've ne you've not got anywhere you've probably put on more weight then you're like well what's the fucking point yeah i think you know it's just it's, i think it, as i say like i just you know sometimes i hate having conversations like this because i just feel like it's so easier said than done do you know what i mean like it's, it's so, so it's, so it's really is like because, you it's know, not it's like everything is so fucking manageable like but like you know if, at the end of the day if, everything is going to be a bit challenging in your life hypothetically at like if i was a creature and like you were on this or uh, on this you know renowned body transformation and all i was like babe let's just get dominoes and babe let's go down to the pub and why are you going to the not to say that we would even be together but let's talk hypotheticals and like let's get on it on the weekend let's do a whole bunch of reductive self-care habits it would be so much more difficult for you to have attained as much progress as you have if the environment is not conducive to your your overall goals and it's so difficult to override that because it's you're then having to have really uncomfortable conversations with some of your nearest and dearest being like what you're doing is really bad for my health 
Yeah, but I also think that, like, you, you know, know, again, it's always tit for tat. It's so easier said than done. Like, you, know. you can't just always just, like, remove yourself or remove this yeah, and just, just expect like, everything to be seamless. Like, into a monastery. Like, you know, sometimes it's, you know, you've got to actually navigate that situation. You've got to pull yourself towards yourself and go like, okay, well, I can't control what other people do, but I can control yeah. what I do. And if I, if it means that my partner's going to get dominoes, I'm not that much of a fucking cretin, which means that I need to also inhale and suck on the dominoes. Do you know what I mean? I could make myself a tortilla yeah. pizza. I could get a dominoes. I'm just not going to get an extra large one with all the sides. It's about like that thing where it's like, Always you don't try. always have to do something because somebody else is doing it. Yeah. You should actually think, okay, should I be doing this? Like, is there a should? If it is a should, then you probably most likely don't want to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So if it's if it's down to the fact that you, you know can't manage that nutrition because of your environment or you can't manage your diet around it, yeah. then you think, pull yourself towards yourself and say, okay, I love Domino's and I know my husband come Friday is going to yeah. literally ring up Domino's or fucking get on the app, not ring, fuck, what year are we in? Um, like, and, you know, get on the, yeah, literally. Yeah, drive who down. Anybody? Drive down, yeah. Um, then you go, right, I know it's going to happen, so I'm going to take control of this situation and I'm going to say, right, if I'm going to have the dominoes, I'm going to budget for you for it and I'm going to make a common... You know, I said to a client the other day, she was like, oh, I'm having a burger takeaway. Yeah. Like, a um, really, friend really wants to have it takeaway. What should I get? And I was like, look, like if you look at the calorie breakdowns of this, like I'd be picking like, like a burger and I said, look... 100% want you to have chips. I want you to have the sides. But I was like, perhaps if you're having a takeaway and it's going to home, what about have a burger from the restaurant? That's why you're having it. And then maybe cook some chips at home. Do you know what I mean? Because the calories are obviously way less on home yeah. cooked chips than they are in, in a restaurant. Yeah. And so you get the best of everything, but yeah. you're just having to do a little bit of adjustment. And it's exactly the same as if you really wanted to have chicken strips, a Domino's, a fucking garlic and herb dip, do you know what I mean? Make your own. Like, have your Domino's, but then have the sides that are, like, slightly more conducive yeah. to your goal. Like, yeah. I just... We've got to be realistic with this. And I think you can't just... I know some influence get, influencers, like, get scrutinised over this for yes. stepping into lanes where they're, like especially the fitness ones, like, oh, I'm making statements over things that they've never experienced or understood the situation This is of. what I'm saying. It's like where you're a man, right, and you've never, you've never, your body fat has never been higher than 10%, yet you're willing to wade in and discuss things like antidepressants or mental health or... Uh, weight stigma or anything with regards to a female cycle or the psychology behind the way you know of, of a woman is thinking or feeling it's just yeah but like for example like it's just like if you stay in your lane enough a lot of people step out and there's will just say no to accountability you, you need, because if your environment even... shit if your environment shit if you're mentally depressed this is how it went okay if you're mentally depressed yeah do you know what i mean don't go on antidepressants because you should be able to control what you eat, how you move, fucking go to the gym. And if your environment's shit, why don't you just move? Just move. Yeah. What yeah. what fucking bullshit yeah. is so that? So I'm on twenty four grand. House, I'm on twenty four grand a year living in London, and I've literally got four pounds to scrape together. Do you want me to just move? Should to, I just move? I'll just to, move to Bali. Like yeah, like that's else. it. Like and, and whilst that process of everything Enjoy. takes money and time and stuff, people are like, oh, and thank you for just telling me but, that okay, with your then, lifestyle. But the thing you've is, had no I, mental we health saw issues. that is an, that is a direct example. You go into the comment section and you seeing you see the person just getting murdered by by people commenting, just being like, "You're so out of touch with reality." It's a joke. There's no there's no repercussions for that. No, and instead, in and fact, not, he's like, yeah, I agree, mate. <laughs> I yeah, literally agree, this yeah. This is the thing. Great, cool, let's spend it. It's, it's all for the formative reasons. Yeah, it but then, but then, the, but then who gets the call up to to go on some form of va variation of mainstream media to promote a narrative? Yeah, I know. It's because they've got the abs, babes. They're good looking. No, like, I get that. I appreciate it's, that. It's, but it's it, like, there is but no then people are all people are all walking around scratching their heads, wondering why the vast majority of us have got mental health issues pertaining to food and and body dysmorphia, you know. But we lap it up. You see people liking it, and oh my god, this is amazing, and people just f are frothing for it. 
Yeah, and I think, I mean, but I think there's a lot of people who Jordan maybe is. wouldn't share their opinion now, actually. I feel like sometimes social media, it's like there's a lot of people that still share their fucking opinion. Don't Do you, get me wrong. Martin McDonald put a thing up about Tim Spector being such an arsehole with the Zoe app, and so many people were like, you don't understand. This man is a world-renowned epidemiologist that has studied the and you know could go on the man says that if you drink orange juice you'll get cancer and people will open look at you directly in your face when you're like listen maybe i don't think eating a metabolic muffin is going to give you a greater understanding on how to lose 30 kilos you know maybe you should be potentially not you know focusing on your calorie intake oh wait but so and so says calories don't exist. Do you know what I mean? And then it's it's it makes it's me want to scream. It, but, yeah, but Mark, but like so, you, picking you, on to like people, the end of the fucking day, everybody's everybody. Let's end it right here. We're gonna end it here. Okay. Drop drop some knowledge. I don't believe scientists that work in a lab work off of data and research have any kind of position zero coaching a general population person in in weight loss overall they should never have stepped in the lane they have no understanding of the psychology behind it and their methodologies legitimately ruin people's health and yet there is no repercussion and that's okay and then we'll all keep on profiting from it do you know what I mean so I do think if you're literally lapping up what a scientist says why don't you ask the scientist drop them a fucking email when was the last time you actually worked with a person and not with just some research and data yeah, to some actually mice. get an adequate answer to your fucking research and study the end um <laughs> <laughs> right that was quite a long one wasn't it yeah, anyway um we'll be back we're going to talk about food next time yum, is yum. food your friend and then we're going to really go in because if that's the case we're going to be changing Honey roasted something. cashew nuts oh my friend do you know what? Me and Mark, myself and Mark, no, Mark, Mark and, and I, I um, <laughs> can't buy nuts. No. Because I want honey roasted cashews or salted cashews and I would yeah. inhale the whole packet Georgia and then I would be like, nuts. shut the fuck up. Do you up. love nuts in your mouth? Oh my God. Are you going to start? Should we do sexy talk right yeah, now to okay, end it? Oh yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Do you think I'm a naughty these boy? Nuts? Do you like these nuts? These nuts. I don't like your nuts, no. I only like cashew nuts, okay. Uh, peanuts also. Not a massive fan of walnuts. Mm -mm. Don't like pecans. Pecan. Pecans. Pecan. Pecans? I don't like pecans. Um, pistachios average. Brazil nuts, pretty Off average. Off shit, unless they're covered in chocolate, still shit. Yeah. Um, Hazelnut? Only in Nutella. <laughs> she yeah. says there's no hazelnuts in there. My um, favourite nuts have to be just your traditional peanuts, salted peanuts. No, cashews. A honey roasted or like a cr caramelized cashew nut is enough to me to just you know wipe my whole calorie nuts, allowance out. The best cashew nuts ever. Or Where? In Mozambique. Okay, great. Well, I'm glad everybody. Oh, but actually, this is the how should we end it? But because we're all super loaded and we've got nothing else going on, why don't you fly to Mozambique to yeah. taste these nuts? Yeah, <laughs> like, literally. Yeah. If, you, if you're can. on the verge like, of killing yourself, just go to Mozambique. Mozambique, because you could have the nuts, because yeah. that's exactly what realistic yeah. and relatable, re relatable if you, life is If you're, is you're on, about. you know, 40 grand, 30 grand a year, it doesn't matter. Just, just it leave on, it. Just leave your job. Get it on Klarna. Just <laughs> stretch, stretch that payment out and just... Uh, and just don't have a breakdown about just it. Just don't be sad. Fuck. I just, and for right. fuck's sake, go for a run so your endorphins yeah, really pump just, through your mental yeah, health. Yeah, if you can't, you can't put your heating on, just go outside and run. run yeah, just run. Just fucking run, you lazy pricks. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I hope you realise what we just said was a joke. Okay? Sarcasm. Sarcasm. We're going to be back soon. Speak to you then. Bye. Bye.